Greetings, and welcome to Christ Our Redeemer AME Church. We are the virtual church serving Christ and the community. We worship each Sunday under the anointed leadership of Minister Gilbert Ruffin, Jr. and Minister James Turner, Jr. We are so glad you decided to join us today. So sit back, relax, get ready, get ready, get ready to hear a word from the Lord. Good morning, Christ our Redeemer. We wake up with praise on our lips and a heart of gratitude. Come on, worship with me this morning. Just lift your hands as a sign of surrender. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask or think, according to the power that worketh, yeah, worketh in me and you. God is able to do just what he said he would do. Yeah. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Say, don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you. He's able. Yes. Oh, oh. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Come on, sing it with me. Come on. God is able to do just what he said he will do. Yeah. He's going to fulfill every, every, every promise he made to you. Oh. So don't give up on God. He won't give up on you. You know he's able. Hey! It is an amazing feeling just to know this morning. Oh, that he's able. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Come on, sing with me. God is able to do just what he said he would do. Yeah. He's going to fulfill. Every promise that he ever made to you, oh, so don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you, he's able. Ooh. I'm a living witness, if you don't believe, look at me, he's able, hey, ooh, oh, oh. See how able he is and watch him show up just in time, right on time. Sing it with me. Oh, 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 Whatever you need, whatever you want, whatever you've been praying for, whatever it is, he's able, God is able, give him a try, don't let him pass you by, cast yourself before him, say God, I need you, ooh, I do, come on, sing with me, he's able, you say, he's able, Come on, he's able. If you say it, he'll show up. Say, he's, he's able. I'm a witness that is, that is. Oh, ooh, he's able. Oh, I'm so glad that my God is able. Don't give up, don't give up, 
up, don't you dare give up Don't give up on God Cause he won't, he won't, he ain't never yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you give up, don't you give in The race is not for the swift but he that endure it till the end Don't give up, you're almost right there just keep on pushing, keep on striving. Hey, don't give up on God. He ain't never giving up on you. Hey, I will never. I put my hand on the plow, and I won't look back. I don't need to look back. He's able. Come on, right in your living room. Put your hands together and give God a praise. Well, welcome, saints. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Praise the Lord. We thank you for joining us for today's service. It's going to be a blessing. It's going to be a blessing. It's going to be a blessing. We are experiencing yet another week of God's fullness and God's joy, God's grace and God's mercy, only because God loves us so. And we thank God for loving us. I'm about to, to give God some praise right here for loving us the way that God loves us. Uh, no one can love us like God. We pray that your week has been blessed and we pray that you're experiencing higher heights and deeper depths in the Lord. We pray that you rest in the fact that God is still in control. I always say this, and I haven't said it in a while, but I'm going to remind myself even now, if you have breath in your body, you ought to give God some praise for allowing you to see yet another day. We thank you, Lord, for yet another day, another opportunity to worship God, another opportunity to be found in fellowship with one another, sharing in God's words, supping and dining together to fullness, to the fullness of joy and the fullness of love, fullness of peace in us that comes from God's word. God's spirit be with us even in this moment, the Holy Ghost be with us even now, God, as we prepare to to, to go into this service. God, we thank you and we bless your holy name for what you're doing even right now in this service. God, we thank you, God, that you're here, that you're present with us even now, God, as we endeavor to serve, God, as we endeavor to worship you, God, one and all, God, across, God, the airways, across the internet, God, across every virtual platform and medium that you would have us to enter into. God, we pray for your people right now in the name of Jesus. God, we lift up Pastor Turner to you right now in the name of Jesus. God, dip him down in the oil of anointing, God, that he might preach what thus saith the Lord, God, that he might have articulation of speech, God, and clarity of thought as he preaches your word. God, that preaching might come easy. And more importantly, God, that someone might be saved today as a result of your word going forth. God, you said your word would go forth and not come back void. God, do it today in the name of Jesus. We thank you. God, for this opportunity. We thank you, God, for being in the in your presence, God. We thank you, God, for this, this loving moment of fellowship that we can come together, one and all, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen again. Saints, it has been wonderful. It has been wonderful. It has been wonderful. Uh, you... <laughs> We thank God for the hymn of praise that has been sung, and we thank God for all that God is doing in our life. We thank God for Sister, Sister Staples, who was experiencing some challenges right now in her life, and we want to just continue to lift her in prayer, God, her and her family. God, we pray that you would continue to give them peace and comfort in this hour of need. God, we thank you for this opportunity to worship you and to serve you. And we thank you, God, for all that you're doing in our lives. We know that it all works together for our good. And God, for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. Bless us even right now, in spite of the challenges, in Jesus' name. Amen, somebody. Amen, amen, and amen again. Well, we have a few announcements for you today. We've added this additional service, this 10 a.m. service. Uh, that you may be watching now. We announced it last week, but we're actually doing it now. So we've added this 10 a.m. service in addition to our existing 2 p.m. broadcast so that you can have a choice of watching early or, or, or early morning or late afternoon or early afternoon, I should say. So this is now an opportunity for us to share God's word 
uh, uh, more than we have in the past. And we thank God for this blessing uh, of being able to share more of God's word. What a blessing, what a blessing, what a blessing. Now, we also want you to join us this Wednesday as we discuss uh, for our Wisdom Wednesdays, as we discuss uh, chapter four of Samuel Proctor's uh, book, uh, My Moral Odyssey. Chapter four is developing a well-equipped conscience. Uh, let me say that again, developing a well-equipped conscience. Okay, let me say that clearly, conscience, amen. Now, what we're gonna be focusing on this week is the development of our conscience. And, and, and that can come from our experiences through seminary, uh, through culture or other uh, worldly experiences even. So we're gonna be focusing on that this weekend, this uh, Wednesday. We pray that you will uh, get the book. We pray that you will read along with us. We pray that you'll do the reflection so that it can be a blessing to you and your family and your friends and your social network. Amen, somebody. Share this word with someone. Uh, we are reminding everyone that we are partnered with uh, Prince George's County uh, school system. Uh, we have adopted uh, James Madison Middle School, and we will be supporting and engaging the students there, the parents at James Madison. And in addition to that, we will be providing uh, donations of backpacks, anything that they might need, supplies, uh, coach shoes, uh, engineering calculators, and assortment of other material needs. Uh, I think Pastor Turner said it last week, we're going to try to support those who have a need uh, for financial assistance with their lunch uh, in case, you know, just in case they have some uh, need for financial assistance for lunches and things of that nature. So we, to that end, we need you and we need your time, your talent and your time in supporting this partnership. And with that, I think it's time, you know, and on that note, I think it's time to give. I think it is time to give. This is a worship moment. This is a worship experience. We thank God for the opportunity to worship through giving. Uh, and, and you can give one of four ways here uh, at Christ Our Redeemer. And you should see those on your screen now. You can give via Cash App, Givelify, Tithely, or via snail mail to our P.O. Box uh, 1793, 1792, excuse me, here in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, 20773. That's Christ our Redeemer. So you can mail your check. You can use one of the three uh, methods, automated methods of, of giving or electronic methods of giving, cash app, Givelify or Tidely. And uh, we need your help. We're asking you to support our new partnership with Prince George's County Public Schools as we endeavor to support the students and families of James, James Madison Middle School. Uh, so be with us in this and simply add a note with your offering or your tithe. Uh, if you're trying to, if you're supporting uh, James Madison Middle School, let us know the amount that you would like to give, uh, whatever amount you can in support of this endeavor, this partnership with James Madison, and just put a little note on your offering so that we know to distinguish that particular offering or, or, or donation, if you will, towards the partnership vice with your offering to Christ our Redeemer Amy Church to support this ministry. God bless each and every one of you for supporting this ministry. Uh, well, 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 I love what God is doing through this church and through his, through his church and through this ministry. And we continue, as we continue to endeavor to serve both Christ and the community. Well, it is time for today's scripture. It is time for today's scripture. And I will be reading for your hearing, uh, Psalms 23 from the New Revised Standard Version. I will be reading Psalms 23 uh, from the New Revised Standard Version for your hearing. And it reads thusly, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the in right paths for his namesake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word of God for the people of God. 
thanks be to God. Well, saints, we have we have in, enjoyed the service thus far, but we have we're coming to the point of the service where it is preaching time. It is preaching time. It is preaching time. Uh, we uh, we want you to prepare your hearts. We want you to prepare your minds because it's preaching time. Now, if ever there was a time that we needed a word, now is that time. Today is that day. To, today is that day that we need God's word more than ever. I'm so glad that there's a preacher in the house to deliver a much needed word today. And, and God has prepared a word to be shared with you and with me today through this preacher. And this preacher has been, God has prepared this preacher to preach what thus saith the Lord. So after the sermonic selection, the next voice that you will hear will be none other than Pastor James C. Turner Jr. Hear ye him and truly be blessed. All right, Christ our Redeemer, we're going to do a little bit of worshiping. And what I need you to remember is that when you are worshiping, you are turning over the soils of your heart so that the word of God can take root downward and bear fruit upward. So let's turn over the soils in our, of our hearts as we worship. Oh, nobody's greater. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen to the words. Climbed up to the highest mountain, looked all around, couldn't find nobody. Yeah. Went down into the deepest valley, looked all around down there, couldn't find nobody. No. Yeah. I went across the deep blue sea. No one could compare to your grace, your love, your mercy. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. I love this song. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody's greater, nobody's greater, nobody's greater than you. Ooh. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. No, no, nobody's greater. Nobody's greater, nobody's greater than you. Mm. Nobody can heal me like you can. Oh, most holy one, you are the great I am. Awesome in all your ways and mighty is your head. You are he who carried out redemption's plan. You are he who carried out redemption's plan. So my God, I couldn't find nobody. I was still couldn't find nobody. Nobody's greater. Nobody's greater, nobody's greater than you, God. Yeah. I searched so long, couldn't find nobody. And I couldn't find nobody. You know I did. And I still couldn't find nobody. Cause nobody's greater. Nobody's greater. Yeah. Nobody, 
you all and thank you for being here with us at Christ our Redeemer whether it's our 10 a.m. service or our 2 p.m. service we're just glad and thankful that you've joined us this Sunday uh, thank you to Sister Opal for that beautiful sermonic selection uh, that she sung for us it has really um, helped us get into the space of worship and to hear what God has given me to preach to our Christ our Redeemer family and thank you uh, Pastor Ruffin for doing the uh, for worship leading today. Uh, your zeal and passion for worship leading is second to none. And we thank God for you and your ministry and your uh, academic ministry at Payne Theological Seminary. Um, we are thankful that if you, um, for those who joined us on Wednesday for our Wisdom Wednesday with uh, uh, Reverend Dr. Samuel Proctor's book, My Moral Odyssey, as we see right here, and we'll be in chapter four, as Minister Ruffin stated, uh, a, a developing a well-equipped conscience. So we look forward to seeing you all on Wednesday at seven o'clock on Christ Our Redeemer's Facebook page. Uh, let us pray together, my brothers and sisters, before we start with this sermon. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to say thank you for this moment. We say thank you for the time we have together. While we may be separate, we are together connected to one another virtually and spiritually. Uh, we pray that the sermon that you have <clears throat> placed in my heart and in my mind and that I am preaching to the people, uh, take seed and take root within the hearts of the people so that they know that uh, it came from you and not from me. Uh, hide me behind you so that they see you, hear you, and feel you and not see, hear, or feel me. And we pray that it's this sermon in this time together, someone's heart is touched to join Christ our Redeemer, join the church universal, uh, rededicate their life and faith, or even just are in need of prayer that they reach out and say, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to join Christ our Redeemer? What must I do to join the church universal? And will you pray for me? And so that my minister, uh, Pastor Ruffin and I will uh, <clears throat> be quick, fast, and reach out to our brother and our sister or our sister to help them along in their journey. We are thankful for you and what you've done in our lives. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, so the, the sermon topic for today is God cares and so should you. Uh, once again, uh, for the people in the back, if we were in the church, uh, God cares and so should you. Uh, so we minister, well, excuse me, Pastor Ruffin has read a scripture that we know 
uh, from my time, uh, whether it is in Sunday school or for me, it was in daycare. Uh, we heard uh, it was familiar. It was kind of different because of the, 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 the language. It was more modern language uh, than what we hear in the King James Version. But we all know this scripture well. Uh, uh, well, most of us, or if not all of us, know this scripture well. Um, and so we, we find ourselves in this scripture uh, knowing the famil familiarity of, excuse me, um, uh, that can honestly possibly suppress uh, us from uh, seeing and understanding a new way or uh, bringing ourselves new to the text because we've, we've listened to it and we've heard it uh, as a youth and maybe even as a, a, a child, a toddler, uh, all the way up to where we are now. Uh, but I feel like God is breathing new life into this sermon, or oh, excuse me, into the scripture for us in this uh, sermonic moment. Um, and it is, uh, it is important for us uh, to look at it in a new light, especially in a way in, uh, in the world in which we live right now, um, because it is, uh, while we, there's a lot of poetic language in there, and it's a lot of um, it's a lot of joy. But what I really want us to deal with today, what I really want us to delve into, is the mental health aspect of this sermon, um, and both from an individual and a communal aspect, uh, so that we are holistically whole uh, when we're dealing with others as well as dealing with ourselves. Um, from an individual mental health standpoint, we see that as through the, um, through this um, the 23rd Psalter, uh, God is providing those necessary things for the writer to survive in the midst of their surroundings. Uh, food, water, shelter, safety. God is the divine shepherd that is taking care of his sheep and providing for them those things necessary for them to live. Uh, so we see uh, them in the meadow, uh, having um being able to drink and eat in the midst of their enemies uh but uh, in this moment we have together i want us to focus on something that isn't explicitly stated within the text but it's something that has been placed in my heart to speak to you all about and that's your mental health as we uh we uh, stated before uh for far too long talking about mental health has been a taboo within the black community uh unfortunately uh, persons who would say, I need to go to a therapist, I uh, will just tell you to pray about it, which is fine, but I, I'm a firm believer in praying and talking to licensed clinicians, licensed therapists, licensed uh, counselors who will help you navigate through those rough and tough times we all have dealt with as children, as youth, as young adults, and even adults. Um, and unfortunately, at this time, it's still, to a certain extent, being uh, continues to be demonized and dismissed instead of embraced and engaged. Um, but I'm glad to see that there are more persons and people are going to licensed counselors and psychologists to deal with those deeply rooted issues and problems that contorts one life in, in a negative way. Uh, it is a hard thing to go through life dealing with the hurt and trauma sustained in your youth and young adult and adult years and they've never been treated. It's a hard thing to see people who that look like you be murdered by the police and nothing is ever hardly done about it. It is a hard thing to exist in a world that says your existence does not matter and find ways to eliminate or limit it. It is a hard thing to deal with living in a pandemic, seeing loved ones die, because of the pandemic and you not be able to celebrate their lives in the manner in which you are accustomed. It is a hard thing not to be around the ones you love and cherish for over a year, missing out on birthday celebrations, anniversaries, baby showers, class reunions, and other celebratory functions. In other words, it is hard right now for most of us living, and we find ourselves trying to deal with all of the difficulties in life uh, while trying to keep some semblance of what a pre-pandemic life was like. But my brothers and sisters, there is a hope that God gives us uh, that we must cling on to and place in our hearts, and that hope 
is that God cares. As we see throughout this psalm, God cares about us and our well-being. God is providing for us those necessities that we need for our daily lives. God cares not only about those things we need for our daily lives, but God cares about our mental health, and we should too. Uh, God wants you, God wants us, God wants me, and God wants y'all to be the best you, us, me, y'all, we can be. And that means we must tackle those things that prohibit us from being our best, and it starts with our mental health. Uh, a thought may run across your mind as uh, did mine when I started to focus on my mental health a little bit more. In what ways and resources are there for me uh, to focus on my mental health? And that's a great question to start with. Before reaching out and looking for resources, you must examine yourself to see what are those things that, you're, that are troubling you emotionally and mentally and write them down in a journal that you only have access to. Uh, be honest and open with yourselves and write it down. It may not happen all at once or over time, uh, but write it down. Sometimes it may take uh, a day to just get it all out. It may take two days, it may take a week, it may take a month, but you have to start digging at those roots. Uh, one of the best resources uh, uh, that I've learned is to talk to a licensed counselor or therapist and then look for, uh, then look, uh, for one uh, that you would feel comfortable talking to about what you need to talk about. Uh, there are organizations that have counselors with Christian focus and uh, backgrounds with counselors that look just like us, if you, you catch what I'm saying. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Many, if not all, use virtual platforms to provide their services for their clients. Uh, many, uh, also many of them accept insurances that, uh, so that the cost of the service is lower than paying out of the pocket. And if you find yourself uninsured, uh, please contact us uh, and we will see if there's a way for you to find the help that you need uh, at a low cost. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we want to serve Christ and the community. Um, to make sure that you are the best you that you can be. Uh, another great resource uh, that I found that's a personal individual one that I use is to find time to do those things that you enjoy doing. Uh, it is imperative that we take as much time as we can to do something that brings us joy. Something that can shift our mood, shift our attitude, shift our perspective on how the day is going. Uh, one of the things that I've instituted in, in our household and, and Chelsea and I have instituted rather is uh, that we spend at least 15 minutes playing a game at least three times a week, uh, whether it's Connect Four, Trouble, Uno, a video game. I know I have a bunch of them. Uh, we set aside time for Chelsea and I to do something fun and competitive uh, and Lord knows Sister Chelsea is a fierce competitor and I have won maybe one or two times against her, um, but I am glad to just spend that time with my wife outside of talking about household things, family things, uh, life things, and just sit and just enjoy one another. Uh, and I pray maybe uh, soon that I'll be able to win a little bit more than I have uh, lately. Uh, but for you, it may not be a game night. It might be reading a favorite book, listening to music, riding your bike, working out, praying, reading the Bible, doing yoga, meditating, or some other activity that is unique to you. The main goal and focus of the activity is to bring you joy, bring you back to yourself, bring you back to your center. Uh, with, not, with it not being detrimental to you, or, uh, or others mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and or physically. Uh, there will be times when doing that thing that brings you joy won't happen because life gets in the way. Trust me, I understand. Uh, but being mindful of how much time you're not, uh, how many times you're not doing the thing or activity that you, you ask yourself to do um, uh, can help uh, push you back into going into your old pattern of not doing it. So be mindful of how much time you've not, you're not accomplishing your goal of uh, finding things to bring you joy. 
uh, and just find a sliver of time, find, uh, uh, make time to do those things that uh, will bring you joy. Because if we focus on ourselves individually, uh, we're then able to help others within our community. Um, I know for myself, a great resource of community, uh, helping others in the community is just reaching out to one another. Um, just reaching out saying, hey, how are you doing? How's thing going? Uh, things are going. Is there anything that I can do for you? Is there any way that I can be a service to you? And Lord knows that we are, we, we grow in community. Um, we may, you know, the growing process may be a little bit tense sometimes because we're, and sometimes it's hard to grow out of those things and out of those places that we hold on dear to. And we honestly identify ourselves with, but God is calling us to grow further and greater in, uh, in God. And, and one of the things in, in the, uh, the, the psalm that I really want us to focus on um, is the fact that God is preparing a table in verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows in verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord by whole life long. Um, so there will be times that you, you, in your, your, your space and in your place in life that you need to access those things that God has prepared for you, uh, that God has placed on your heart for your mental health. And so the, you may be in the presence of chaos. You may be in the presence of things busting loose. You may be in the presence of persons not trying to see you succeed or thrive in life, but find time to get back to your center because God cares and so should you. Um, but another thing that I would, from a communal aspect that I wanted us to, to focus in on is the house of the Lord portion of verse six. Um, if we are all called to be in God's house, which I do believe, then that means we must not be a burden to one another when it comes to our uh, mental health. Find ways to alleviate your brothers and sisters in other manners, in other ways. Um, you know, for myself, if it's for me to do wash the dishes to make sure my wife is okay, if it's for you to take the car and get it washed for your, your, your mom or to buy, to get the groceries or to do something that will help somebody else mental, their mental health capacity, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in a time in which they're, they're, they may be struggling, even if they don't know it. Because oftentimes we have this very Superman, Superwoman, Wonder Woman complex where we feel like we can do it all. We, and, you know, I can fight through it. You know, I'm gonna press my way. Sometimes you just need to rest, not press. Um, because the body will tell you, hey, you're not doing okay. You're not in the space and place where you're supposed to be. You're not at homeostasis right now. You're outside of yourself. And so if we have a keen eye as a community, seeing persons who, um, who just need that little extra TLC, that tender loving care by saying, hey, can I, can I just buy you, uh, let me give you a gift card. Can I buy you lunch? Can I just you know, see how you're doing? Can we talk for a moment? Um, that is what God is calling us to do in this, in this uh, time. Not only focus on ourselves, but focus on others. It is, a, it is rough out here for all of us right now. It's, it's a, a, a time in which we, we have access to a lot of things and a lot of videos and a lot of um, stories and news. And it can be a lot, <clears throat> excuse me. And what we have to do is find a way to help one another get through these times. Uh, my prayer is that these times won't last too long and that we'll be able to get to the other side. Um, but at the same time, we must help ourselves and help others to get to the other side as well. And, uh, and in closing, we, it's been established that God cares, but it may not have been established that you should too. You matter. There's one of one. You are the only you here on planet Earth. 
you're probably the only one in existence. And make sure that you take care of yourself. Make sure you do the things that are necessary for you to thrive. Make sure you do the things that are necessary for you to be the best you that you can be at this moment. Be mindful of where you are. Be mindful of how much God cares for you. God wants you to have a better mental health if you're not at that point right now in your life. So my brothers and sisters, it is my, I implore you, I implore us, I implore me, I implore y'all to care. And as we come to our uh, Christian, in, uh, excuse me, our invitation to Christian discipleship, uh, we know that God cares. And so to connect to a God that cares about you, even though you may not have a relationship with God at this moment, even though your relationship with God may uh, not be at the correct connection or, or you may be ships passing in the night, God still cares. God wants to reconnect the relationship with you. And so in our chat and on the screen, we have ways for you to connect with us. Um, via our Google Doc. Um, if you wanna connect with us through Facebook Messenger, that's fine. If you wanna connect with us on our website, that's fine. But we pray that if God is calling you back to God's self, that you answer the call. That you say, yes, God, I, I want to come back to you. And, or, and if God is calling you to hear to Christ our Redeemer, we would love to be your pastors. Um, we, we are excited and elated. I know I say that all the time, I guess that's my catchphrase that um, God chose us to be here at Christ for our Redeemer for a very special assignment. We thank God for our Bishop, for listening to God and presiding elder and our pastors, uh, our mother and father in ministry um, for thinking of us about this assignment. And so we want to be able to uh, provide the best pastoral care and counseling and comfort and counsel um, here at Christ our Redeemer. And we pray that if God has laid it on your heart to join Christ our Redeemer, that you do so. And even if you're, you join the church somewhere else or and you're already Christian, you've been a Christian for 45, 50 years, um, but you still need prayer. You still need covering. You can't have too much covering during this journey, during this walk, um, because we all can pray for one another. We all can um, lift up our voices on another's behalf. Um, so we would love to pray for you here, Christ our Redeemer, uh, fill out the form, whatever your prayer request uh, is, and we will, we will call you and we will pray for you over the phone. We will check in on you. Uh, whether you're uh, part of the Christ, uh, the core family or not, we still want to check on you because you're part of the Christ family and you're part of God's family. So you are our brothers and sisters, no matter where you may uh, worship, no matter, um, yeah, no matter where you may worship. So we thank God for those uh, who uh, want to reconnect with Christ or connect with Christ and connect with Christ our Redeemer or just need in prayer. And let, let us pray in this moment for those persons. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we come to say thank you for anyone who has joined Christ our Redeemer, joined the Church Universal, or just asked for prayer. We know that sometimes we, we don't want to take that step because we don't know where that step's going to lead. But we are grateful and thankful that you are always with us wherever we are stepping. And we pray that if someone wants to join the Christ our Redeemer family, that we're walking along with them, guiding them through this, uh, this, uh, this journey of faith, being their pastors, making sure that they're okay, that their needs are met both uh, emotionally, spiritually, um, nutritionally, uh, and emotionally, Lord. And uh, we just thank you for the opportunity for us to be here and to serve your people. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. We are now at our benediction, my brothers and sisters. We thank God for you being here with us 
uh, this Sunday, whether it be 10 o'clock or two o'clock. We thank God for Sister Staples for blessing us in song. We thank God for Chelsea producing our video. We thank God for Pastor Ruffin and his brilliant mind and his zeal for Christ in worship, uh, leading us in worship today. And we thank God for you. We thank God that you're watching here, uh, watching us today. And we pray, we pray, we pray, we, we, we pray that this week is a blessed week. And now for our benediction. May the love of Christ enter our hearts. May the eyes of Christ be in our in our eyes. May the, the ears of Christ be in our ears. May, may the zeal of Christ be in our souls because we know God cares and so should we. May we have a blessed week and may we come back together to next Sunday even greater and, and even uh, and grown in maturity in our walk in Christ even so more than we are right now. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you all. See you next week.